Hi there, guys, and welcome to the stories of Revenant. This is a Ruby podcast where we love to explain our love hate relationship with Ruby. I am, of course, your host, Efo Kushner, and welcome to episode three, where we'll be discussing. Oh, wait, I almost got to hit that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where we'll be discussing Volume 7, Episode 3, Ace Operatives. And then, of course, I'm going to go into my end of the speculation station of what to look forward to for Episode 4 and the season in general. But before I do that, I just want to just say hi, man. Hope everyone's having a good time, man. Okay, so now we can get to it because now that's, you know. That got that out the way. Hope everyone's good. Uh, Yang is still the best Ruby character, you know, but all right. So let's go into the episode. So let me give you my recap for those that have seen it, but they're just like, "Uh, you know, there's some things I don't remember. Well, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. So, you know, just. Whoa, chill out, man. Okay. I got it. I got it. I do got it. So let's go into it. So the team gets brand new gear. And dues as they head to the Amity, Amity Communication Tower. It's pretty much just clear a nice little pathway so that way, you know, that's their, their launch site looks good. But you know, there's a, there's a pesky old, hold on, there's a pesky old, Prowlers of the night. Just, just staying there. That, that super old Grim that's able to fly into inanimate objects and, take control of it yo that is so zelda i feel like that's that's zelda something i don't want to i don't want to base that off anything you know but yeah anyways though so this grim is pretty much there at, at the location site and pretty much team ruby team junior and crow teams up with the ace ops but in the meantime we get to talk about the new dudes man Like you know, John and, and John and Blank got a haircut. You know, I was I was kind of surprised. I wasn't really expecting John to get a haircut. I, I don't know why, man. You know, like it it just seemed like in that one scene, it just seemed like a little bit of hair just got into his eyes, and he was like, Psh, "Yo, my hair is too long. I gotta cut this shit, man. It's gotta go." And I was like, "Bro, you you don't have to cut it." <laughs> Blake's made sense. You know, what I'm saying like if you are gonna go into a fight, and I mean she's pretty much noticed people like to pull hair. <laughs> When they when they're kicking your ass, so cutting your hair kind of just seems like the logical option. But I mean, for John, I'm like, bro, ain't nobody gonna touch your hair, man. Your your hair is so short, you're, whatever. Um, everyone else got the new outfits. I gotta say though, man, I'm 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 kind of liking Weiss's outfit. Please forgive me on me saying that, but I am digging Weiss's outfit. Oh man, I can't believe I'm actually saying that. I'm actually digging Weiss's new outfit. She still hasn't cut that hair though, but I mean, it is what it is, what it is. <sighs> Besides that though, everyone gets to show off the new skills. We got a little Blake and, Blake and Yang action with Yang looking at the haircut, being like, oh my goodness, you know? And I was just like, hmm, okay, okay. You know, like Blake was having a hard time, but you know, she. So be cool, okay? You're gonna be cool, right? Dude. She was having a hard time keeping it together, but I'll leave it at that, man. I still think those two need to have a discussion, but besides that, you know, we, we kind of see the location where we're there with the ace op. So I believe at that time, Harriet and Meryl decided to go with Team Ruby. They're in one location. Then we got Elmet Vine with Team Junior in another location. And then we got Clover and Crow at like this weird little spot but you know they're they're together anyways and i feel like that's like the leaders of the the group so i'm like all right cool um but we're going to go into team ruby's little section so ruby team ruby with uh harry and amaro of the aesops uh so harry and amaro like kind of up in front team ruby's kind of in the back just chilling just looking around like damn man this location looks fucked up <laughs> and then Yang kind of pops the biggest question of the day. And Yang was just like, so don't you think we should like tell the Aesops and Ironwood about Oscar and Jen and why Oscar didn't come with us? And, and Ruby was just like, hold up now. We, you know, Ironwood, Ironwood's acting a little suspicious. I've been saying that since the, since the last episode. 
Ironwood's acting a little suspicious, so she's like, you know what? Let's let's just see how Ironwood acts and plays out, Yang, and then we'll tell him everything. And Blake and Weiss are just like, yeah, I agree with Ruby. And, and Yang's just like, hmm. Just seems like we're acting a little Oz pin on this one, man. Like, even Oscar kind of mentioned it, too, when Ruby was like, don't you think we should tell Ironwood? The like, look, man, Jimmy don't need to know everything, all right? Jimmy could chill. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy's acting kind of strange. Jimmy could wait. So, I mean, it's, it just seems like Ruby's kind of acting a little Ozpin in this situation. Little, little, little Ozpin. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay. And after that, you know, we kind of get some time with uh, Crow and Clover. They, they chat a little bit. Now, what's very interesting is Crow kind of has like a little slip up. You know, he's telling, he's telling Clover like, hey, man. My semblance is kind of like a little bit of this bad luck mojo, jojo, juju. So, you know, some some horrible stuff can happen if you're around me. And Clover's like, Psh, bruh, you're good, man. Calm down. <laughs> and he's like, I got this. Because you want to know why? And he's like, why? Just trust me. I got this. And he's like, bam, I got good luck. Good luck, bad luck. Boom. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Calm that shit down. And then we got Junior being with uh, Elm, and, uh, Elm and Vine. Those two are together. And then you got Junior, which is John, Nora, and Ren. And then it seems like Nora tries to make a little move, you know, telling, telling Ren, like, hey, Ren, your haircut's looking kind of nice, man. You're looking, looking a little sexy right there, you know. Nora, Nora trying to put them vibes out there, like, hey, man, you, you're looking kind of good right now. And then Ren's like, hold up, man. We got a mission. I'm going to need you to calm all that down, Missy. And then John was just hey, like, hey, man, you got a nice outfit, too. And Nora's like, Psh, but you know what, though? If Ren don't stop playing games, if he don't stop fucking around, John will go ahead and take your woman, man, you know? Well, the name's John Ark. Short, sweet, rolls off the tongue. Ladies love it. Do they? They will. Well, I, I hope they will. And, and Nora might be that one, man. And I'm just saying, he ain't got no woman. You know, she ended up being killed. So, just saying, Ranky playing them games, John going to swoop up and take her. <laughs> um, besides that, though, the uh, pretty much, well, so let's see, let me, let me get back into it. So, Bravo and Team Ruby, uh, they pretty much arrive at this location, and this location kind of looks messed up. A little bit of explosions, mine kind of collapsed and stuff like that. And it turns, come to find out, this is actually where the Faunus kind of had that accident due to the mining location due to the Schnee family causing the incident. So of course, you know, Weiss feels bad. She's like, man, I really feel bad. I, I, my father was an asshole. I, I, you know, this is a horrible thing to have to fondness. You know, it's like one of those deep moments where it's just like, you know, at least we're noticing the systematic, uh, you know, oppression between the fondness and the humans. And then, of course, Meryl trying to, you know, he comes over. He's basically saying, like, you know, he's he's talking about the disparage still going down in Atlas. But at the end, he's just pretty much saying, like, yo, man, I'm not really here to solve this. We're here to do our mission. But, you know, it's still a good talk. And I was like, yeah, man, it was. It was. And even even Blake got into it. You know, she's just like, you know what? You're right, Rice. You, your, your dad is definitely an asshole, but you're not one. So that's always good. And then, of course... Harriet pretty much told Blake, well, well, Meryl told Blake, like, hey, man, do you think you can scout on a little bit ahead? Because, you know, I can't see in the dark. And you got them really nice eyes. Oh, by the way, there was like a little quip about Ruby and her speed. But I, I think that I think I may have passed. No, I think that's a little later on into the episode. I forgot where that part was because it was just like, oh, OK, silver eye joke. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I probably I probably messed that up. And, dang, that's probably the one thing I should have written down, right? But I was just like, oh, it's a silver eye joke. Anyways, Blake goes on the head. You know, she scouts ahead. And then the next thing she knows, oh, snap, man. We find the super old, amazing Grim. Or should I say? Prowlers of the night. So we see this thing. And then Harry is like, oh, hell no. So, you know what I'm saying? She gets she gets the burn knuckles out. You know, she gets the the bionic fist of hers. And then she, like, punches down the wall. Everyone's trying to find this thing. Next thing you know, like that little old, like the old big old Grim just like disappears. And next thing you know, we get Grim coming out from the ground. And then it's just like, all right, guys, it's time to kick some ass. So basically, what had happened was 
Yang decides to try out the new weapons. And she's going a crap. She just runs in. Rah! She starts punching people. Bam, 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 bam. Well, not punch people. She's punching these grim, right? But she's like, pop, 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 pop. But the next thing you know, you're like, wait, why aren't the grim fading into nothing? Oh, I know why. Because there's little explosives on there. And after Blake, I mean, I have to play with. After Yang does her little bionic punches and stuff with the right arm and the left arm, you know, he decides to back up and explosions. I was like, oh my gosh, delayed attack. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then, of course, we go, what was it? What did Weiss do? Weiss, Weiss pretty much, she just. Actually, no, this one's not. That's actually bad music. Hold on. I don't like that one. That was a. That is Weiss's thing, but, you know. It's, actually, no. That's what's going to this one. So it's like this, right? So, of course, Yang does a little cool attack. Then after that, we transition to Weiss. Weiss, you know what I'm saying? She's got the sword. She's slashing all um, they do for the Majin all over the place, man. Grimmer just fading into nothingness. Then, you know, we'll switch over to Ruby. Ruby is just like slash, slash, slash. And then, you know, she had her sight down at this weird angle. And then this Grim was trying to come up at her. And it was like, ah! And then Ruby was like, Psh! bro are you really coming at me with this shit so then she like clicks one little button and then her sight magically transforms to another side and then she's like oh you done fucked up now and then she's like demon slash whoosh and then the girl's like ah and then the grim face and nothing and stuff like that and then of course you know blake blake's using you know, like her ninja jutsu you know she's teleporting all over the place slash 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 and then we get to see Harriet. Harriet's actually using some super speed. So apparently she's got the speed technique. She's got the speed force behind her. So she's just running around knocking the shit out of Grim. And then we turn over to Meryl. And Meryl's got like this boomerang. Bro, wait, actually, hold on. Meryl's got a fucking... Wait, hold on. Can I, I just want to say something real quick. How the hell does Meryl have a fucking gun? That, like, Meryl has a boomerang that, that's... It's also a gun. Oh, that's cool. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Why, why do you have a boomerang that's a gun? <laughs> I mean, Randy, he, he got like a cool kill off of it. I was like, all right, well, yeah, I get it. Yay. All right. But then besides that, then, you know, Team Juniper. Uh, team, not Juniper. Damn. I'm sorry. Sorry, Pierre. But team Junior pretty much with uh, Vine and Elm kind of get into a fight. Now, by the way, I will say this. I think... Elm's semblance it's got to be animal based because there's like this green substance came from her foot but it seemed like to have claws and vine vine seems to have like these weird little claws as well but they kind of stretch out super fine but you know it's all good elm thing seems to have a hammer i don't know i mean i'm just saying on the semblance but then you know we see john with the nice you know new shield and stuff like that it seems to have like a pushback effect but then again john is kind of like an enhancer so maybe he can enhance the weapon to have it do like interesting things then of course you know we get to see ren's new gun but it i mean i, I guess it's kind of cool it's got like uh like these weird little retractable things that you stick on the enemy and they can just go towards them and then just slash 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 shoot 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 and then nora's got the big ass fucking hammer with the shotgun she's got a shotgun hammer or a cannon hammer Oh my gosh, but pretty much Grimmer just falling all over the place, man. Grimmer dying. It's going down. It's crazy. 2019. The teams are having fun. Grimmer getting their ass kicked, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to play that music. I, that music was perfect for that fight. That fight was, they, it was, it was going in. Then, of course, uh, <laughs> Crow and Clover kind of run into the, the, the boss Grim. That's like fading into the shadow. You know, they almost, uh, what was it? That, that Grim finally managed to get into some weird, you know, crystallized object and then managed to transform and then it like fell through the ground because <laughs> of Crow's semblance. And it's just like, okay, well, Crow managed to save the day, kind of, sort of, maybe. And Clover was like, see, man, don't worry about it. I got the good luck. You got the bad luck together. We're the, you know, we cancel each other out. But we body the Grim. So I was like, all right. And then pretty much everyone like intervenes at the location because they managed to make it to the launch site. Well, Team uh, Ruby and 
team junior kind of make it to the launch site with the Aesops. But Clover and Crow were still kind of coming through. But then as soon as they reached there, boom, guess who they meet? They meet the super special boss. And as soon as they run into the boss, it's time for the ultimate fight. The showdown and the throwdown as all of the group kind of comes together. And we're thinking that Team Ruby and Team Junior and we're thinking the Aesops are all going to team up. But what did Aesops do? They're like, nah, man, we got this. So Aesops go into action. And then they're all just starting to kick ass, taking out this thing. Slash, slash, take a bath in this bitch. It's going down. Like, fights are going down. You can hear the gunshots. It's going crazy, man. And then after a while, you know, it was just like, oh, man, Clover joins in the fight. This creature is like dropping like fucking dust all over the ground. Now, granted, if the dust manages to touch the ground, explosions, Michael Bay, and they all go up. But instead, Ace Options go in. They freaking. So, yeah, they pretty much just go in. More gunshots. And then that's, that's, that's pretty much it, man. You know, oh. I mean, Ruby managed to save the day by grabbing, like, one little baby crystal and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's just like, psh, okay. And then Harry kind of mentions, like, man, you know, like, I've seen speedsters, and I think you're something special. And it's just like, oh, wait, that's when the silver eye thing goes in. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then that's where he's like, wait till you see these silver eyes. And I was just like, oh, the silver eyes. <laughs> yeah. And then that's that's pretty much what happened, you know. They protect the launch site, everything's good. Hip hip hooray, yay. And then meanwhile hold on, let me get this together. Meanwhile from the congregation of chaos, we come to find out that one of the protesters in the car he manages to you know get put down into this alley. As he's walking down being pissed and frustrated, who does he fucking run into? He runs into Tyrion! Tyrion's giving that look in his eyes like, hey, buddy, you're looking mighty nice, looking a little tasty. I kind of want to kill you. <laughs> but he's like, you know, me and you have something in common. And the guy's like, what the fuck do we have in common, buddy? And Tyrion just smiles and he said, we're both for a revolution. And the next thing you know, Tyrion has those evil eyes turn purple. And as he raises his tail, as he gets ready to deliver the final blow, he decides to look at the protester one last time and give him a special smile. And then that was it, man. He died at the end. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my synopsis. <laughs> so, woo! Now, here's what I'm speculating from episode four. Everything's all cool. They get the slush site. Hopefully, we're, we're going to learn more about Robin Hill. I mean, yep, Robin Hill. I hope we're going to learn a little bit more about her. I think it's that time of the show where we got to see Robin Hill and we got to see the problems with Mantle. So we're going to start to see a little bit of that. You know, Atlas seems like everything's all good and perky. You know, we're going to start to see the cracks in the armor. But, yeah, man, I'm just saying, episode four, we're going to learn about some Robin Hill. Then we're going to see a little bit of the cracks in the armor. You know, Ruby is going to, or, you know, maybe fucking Crow or maybe fucking Oscar. But the team is going to notice some questions. You know, they're going to be like, what's what's going on with this thing? What's What's going on? I don't, I don't like how things are looking right now. You know what I'm saying? And then I feel like Ironwood, a.k.a. Jimmy, is going to be like, hmm, this team is hiding something from me. But I do not know what it is. I question. I question all of it. But overall, I'm telling you now, man, we've already seen the teams. It's going to be Clover versus Crow. Then it's going to be Crow versus Ironwood. I think that's still going to happen. I think Vine and Elm are going to face Team Junior because they seem, I feel like the Aesop's perfectly separated to correlate in the stop, you know, like each team. I feel like Vine and Elm could definitely take on Team Junior. I feel like Harriet and Meryl are definitely going to try and take on Team Ruby. Meryl's semblance is making me a question mark 
is I don't think he controlled time or stopped those Grimm. I think he used his voice and commanded them to slow down Bobby Valentino style. And then Harriet comes in, you know, bing, bing, ba bop. And so I'm just saying, but I, I'm, I'm seeing it right now, man. I'm still putting it out there. We, we definitely going to see some fights. We're going to see some, some Weiss versus Winter fight. We're definitely going to see a Crow and Clover fight now. We're definitely going to see a Crow and Ironwood fight. We're going to see Vine and Elm versus Team Junior. Harry and Romero versus Team Ruby. Tyrion versus Ruby Rose. Blake and Yang still got to have this discussion, man. Seriously, that... Yo, I, I feel like at this point, they got to talk about it. Like, yo, this this that Adam thing is really causing some things to be on the table. You know what I'm saying? Yang's kind of holding on to something. Blake's kind of... I feel like they need to talk about it. They, they really need to get off their chest. And we, we need some confirmations <laughs> out there in the world. But yeah, man, I feel like the dances are going now. We're going to really see some. I mean, Aesop's, they're looking pretty nice. They're looking pretty strong. But at the same time, I just, I don't trust them. I don't trust Ironwood. We're going to learn the truth, man. Hopefully, we learn a little bit more about the Winter Maiden. Because I'm a little curious, man. Is she bedridden? Is she old? Is she maybe she actually I don't even think she's old anymore. I think she's a young person, but she's just on a shit ton of medication and tied to a fucking bed. I'm telling you, Atlas is looking a little strange in this place. And by the way, the congregation of chaos is definitely coming together. So we're definitely going to see how they're going to affect the mantle. So hmm. I think Mantle, there's going to be a big-ass fight. We're going to see some action going down this season. I'm putting it out there right now. I'm putting it out there. And I think that's all I got, man. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. So, yeah. I appreciate everyone for tuning in and watching, tuning in and listening. Of course, you know, like, comment, and subscribe because I'm trying to survive. Just know. Let these episodes and things I do, I definitely do them for me, but I also do them for you too. So, I mean, it'd be nice if you show a little bit of support. Actually, you guys have been doing a great job of that by, you know, watching and liking or disliking. <laughs> so, I was like, wow, man, you disliked it? But you ain't tell me why? Cool. But it is what it is. I can't get mad about it. But I know one thing's for certain. I hope you guys like the new music and stuff. I'm, I'm really trying to work on the soundboard. You know, but besides that, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for episode four. I'm out of here. So, uh, Bonsai! Bonsai! stay listening.